right guys, I redesigned my ladder crane and I wanted to show you guys what I came up with. So this one here is more universal and the way it works is basically we went to an electric winch. It's a 1500 pound Badlands. I took the bracket they have here, went ahead and trimmed it, cut some of it off, extended it up into here, put on a piece of square tubing there. It's got holes drilled up here to the top so you can pin it anywhere you want so you can move it left or right whatever you need you're able to pivot it with the eyelet here which gives you a pivot point because normally you'd be up there and you would clamp just at the base uh where the uh, foot pegs are at and this thing would be able to move whatever you need to do so you drop your cable down to here lift it up once you get to the top you can pivot it over and drop it down onto the roof and this runs on 120 volts so here's one of the jigs i call it that will get your presser or whatever it is you want to lift up onto the roof what i did here is i use square tubing generally one of these are going to hit the foot peg the way i look at it you're not going to lift a compressor that weighs more than 200 300 pounds this ladder should be rated for 300 pounds so yeah if you're on the rung that's going to be more than capable of holding it i know there was some cranes out there they were like oh we can just get it all on the on the outside corner that's great so my philosophy is if the ladder is not strong enough to hold you then you don't need to be using it to lift up something super stupid heavy what we have here is a schedule 80 black iron pipe i bought that in a scrap yard i bought this square tubing in a scrap yard you could do a c channel the whole thing about these when you're building them is it's really really difficult to find inside outside tube diameters that you want now I will mention, as you're putting this on and taking it off, this will actually hold itself in place. You could use all thread or you can use the bolts that I have here. So if you had something really thick and you wanted to mount this on the side of a block building or whatever, you could do that. But say when we take this off, there you go. So it'll actually hold itself in position. You can store these blocks right here on it. And like I said, we have the traction paper there in between it to help keep it from sliding then i've got a couple extra washers here and then uh, this is just going to mount together this makes the ladder crane a little more useful because it's going to work on all types of ladders it's going to work on step ladders extension ladders and straight ladders like this which you'll run into a variety of all of these but this is going to give you the most universal crane that i have seen these parts all have multiple rolls. So here we have the hitch fitting and we are able to put that same jig in there. I made it so that it just clears that. Take your same piece that you had earlier. Just go ahead and put it on there like that. So essentially you either have power where you're at or you've got power in your van like I do. I've got a power inverter, a 1500 watt. And you're able to lift that right up, which this is a small compressor, but it's for demonstration purposes only. So we got it up there high enough that we can get it to that point right there. And we can just swing it in. And then we can let her right down inside the van without killing ourselves. Boom, just like that. Now, of course, that compressor, if it was like a much bigger one, you'd have a hard time loading it. So. That just uh, makes it a lot easier. Now this eyelet has two different reasonings behind it. You're gonna be able to use this to lift it up to the top. Say you're gonna go up that ladder, you're gonna be able to pull it up, hook a rope onto it, and it uses a pin. So, I mean, is it perfect? No, you could weld something permanently on there. Uh, you could actually put a coupling around there and weld it in place and that would work. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other stuff it can do. And that pretty much takes this one out of the equation. Now you have, this is massively over-engineered. That's, uh, I believe, 3 16 I broke it on a power brake. It's very strong, overly strong. And you're gonna use this for your straight ladder. That's the one you've seen before, straight ladder or your utility ladder. It hooks right onto it. This goes into here. It's got a place where you can pin it and you can raise the different heights. Or if you want, you can come through the back side. I didn't have that flexibility before. Now this may look a little bit familiar. You could take this piece here, 
stick it through. That's your handle. Hook it into here. Adjust it wherever you want. Take your pins, pin your winch in wherever you need it to be at, whether it be here, there, or wherever, and lock it in to multiple different locations. Essentially, this is to mimic a straight ladder. A straight ladder is going to be, I think, 12 inches on center. If you go up here to the top of these ladders and go off the top one, you should see that you're right there at about 12 inches. Most of them are all going to be exactly the same because of the OSHA stuff. So that there will work on straight ladders. It'll work on anywhere you can hook this thing at. I mean, this thing is deep. Our inside diameter here is right at about three and a quarter. So if you break it right there at about three and a quarter area, that'll give you plenty of inseam there. On the down at the bottom here, I'm about three and a half. It was just because the brake wouldn't fit any other way. It was about the most I could get. I went ahead and went extra deep. So on our depth here, we got about four and a quarter. And on the other side, we're right at about four inches. So we're right at four inches there. It's gonna be the same there. Now our base tubing here, this is where you're gonna have your hardest time. Getting inside outside tubing. For me, it's very difficult to get it because most people don't wanna to sell to you because you ain't buying a lot of metal. And it measures in inch and five eighths, looks like there. So inch and five eighths squared. The tubing here and here is exactly the same all the way along here. Uh, this tubing uh, measures in inside diameter about an inch and three quarters. And then this plate up here, same thing. I just spaced these out right at about uh, an inch and a half. Yeah, about an inch and a half separation there between them. So there's that piece. There's use number one on the ladder, straight ladder. Use number two on a straight extension ladder or a A-frame ladder. Or you can work on a trolley system. Just like I've done right here, and you can sit there and move it back and forth and let's just say, for example, that this right here was your hatchway. You're able to pick up your heavy load, whether it be a compressor or whatever. Once it gets up to the top here, you can go ahead and pull it over and then let it down. It does have a little bit of a canner there while it's uh, sitting there with no uh, load on it. But once you put a load on it, click on the simple button here. And here she goes right on up. So, as you can see, that puts her right in line with the cable. And uh, obviously this weighs more than what a compressor is going to weigh. So now I need to get busy cleaning my blades out, getting this thing ready to go, because it's a mess, because it's been crappy weather here lately. I think it's a big improvement over the previous one that I built, where basically I just used some L-channel and welded the piece onto the backs. My feeling is this is truly the ultimate ladder crane. Now you've got the power to lift up anything that you want to lift up. You've got a bracket that's strong, universal. It folds down. You can take it all apart. It fits right in the back of your vehicle. And then with the pole here, you have the option of loading your truck. So you can get the compressor into the back of your truck, out of your truck, up the ladder, onto the roof, and then if you had to lower it down in there, you could use a 10 foot A-frame ladder and hook that onto the rungs of it and lower it down into the compressor if you needed to do that. This is my ultimate ladder crane. If you guys liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. I guess I can take a second here to show you what I've got in my little bag here for my probes. What I do with mine is I've got a ball valve that's uh, obviously removable onto a straight regular six foot hose with a regular T. I took the straighter out of this side here. That's the side I always fill on. So it makes it easy there. Got a little bit of nylog in there and then a uh, traditional straight probe thermometer and then a valve core tool, one of my ones that doesn't uh, hold vacuum as well as some of the others. So I use it for like recoveries and things like that. And then I have these old valves. These come in handy when you can't get the 
uh, field piece probes into those tight spots. So I just hook that on there and I keep them in there in case I need to get into those tight spots. Plus I got a ball valve on it, so it works out real well. Then I do got one extra air probe. Uh, I use that for my ambient. So and then I use some heavy duty tape to label it. And like I said, I went with this 905i. Uh, so far it seems pretty good. The range on it ain't squat, but generally I'm gonna be right at the unit when I'm doing my measurements. So it works out pretty good on that. Uh, and I also bought the 405i wire manometer. So thanks to Zach over at HVAC Shop Talk, I won uh, a GIST certificate to True Tech Tools, which you know is one of the top places out there to get your gizmos at a great price. So while I was ordering and getting uh, my money off and used my discount code that Zach's got, uh, to get your 8%, I ended up deciding to buy something additional. So the marketing ploy technically worked. So thanks to them, you know, boom, I got two gizmos at once, which I haven't got a chance to use this too much. It's more for residential than it's gonna be for commercial, just because of the capabilities and the length of the probe's not super long, but those are the two of my new gizmos. But